and we are live gentlemen <laughs> welcome back to the mecca of banter podcast the podcast where you know what we just keep getting better fellas every episode is a learning experience and we just keep getting better uh we are coming off of opening weekend of the premier league which we have been looking forward to for a long time uh and we have a lot of juicy games to recap from this weekend so without further ado i am this week's host, uh, Henry Wind. You can find me on Twitter at Henry Wind. Um, and I'll say it like I say every single week. It is a great <laughs> week to be a Manchester uh, United fan. I'll talk about it as many times as it takes today, fellas. Uh, great week uh, to be a Manchester United fan. I can't <sighs> wait to talk about the game. Um, but let's uh, let's see how the fellers are doing. Uh, Connor Sandobri, man, how are you doing, bro? <laughs> I, knew, I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. It's great to see you guys. As Hen said, great week to be a Man United fan. Uh, plus three today. And it's an even worse day to be a Liverpool fan. Like, I can't believe Butch had the audacity to show up. Um, <laughs> we, we, we personally should have rejected him from this podcast just so he could stay used to it. Um, stay pretty far from the course. But you, uh, you my gaffer, bro. It's good to see you, man. It's also good to see the rest of you fellas. <laughs> good to have you. Uh, the other winner of the weekend, Lucas Winkleman. What's up, dog? What up, boys? Good to see you guys. I feel like it's been a minute since all seven of us have been on the same pod, so it's cool to see all your faces at one time. Um, an even better week to be a gooner. Three points as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll chat through all that. Like, like Hen said, a lot of juicy games. So let's get it for, uh, well, happy to have you for the rest of you. Um, maybe next week you'll learn what three points is like, but for now, how is one point going for you? Andy Hoover, how's it going? I've had a lot of highs and lows as a Tottenham fan this week. Um, but I have (laughs) been freed from terrorist football after watching it for the last four years. (laughs) And there's some really positive things that I've pulled from this draw. So uh, we can all strap in and get into that. Stoked to talk about it. I think that it's going to be great. Um, Butch, welcome back to the pod. Uh, As Dobes alluded to, I also can't believe you showed up. So uh, how are you? I'm very happy to be here, guys. You know, just excited to be here with my friends and talk the beautiful game of footy, even though we tied yesterday. Uh, it's a great day to be a Liverpool fan. I'm going to go out and say it. It's just a great day. <laughs> just got to say it. Um, we'll come back to you, Butch, because I, I feel like uh, there's a lot to be said about you. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll finally round out with uh, Nick and James. Nick, how you doing, fella? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still weird. You, you said you're you said you were wearing the Chelsea badge this week, but every time you like lean in to talk, it cuts it off from your cam. So I, I <laughs> no, I I like it. I like it hidden. I like it hidden, but I feel like you're you're like easing your way back into wearing the badge by like wearing the shirt, but like hiding say, it. Give him to give him two give him two weeks, and he won't be showing up anymore. So it take two hours. Yeah. Either 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 that, <laughs> either that, or they or they win both, and he wears his Chelsea G string. <laughs> his Chelsea G string. Holy One lord! Of Speaking of Chelsea G strings, James, how you doing, bro? <laughs> Boys, happy to be here. Uh, more excited to be a Chelsea fan than I was last year. That's for damn sure. Um, yeah, man, excited to be here. Excited to talk shit. Some people say that the club is in your blood. Some people only claim it when the club is good. So you know, we'll let, <laughs> we'll, we'll let the listeners we'll let the listeners choose. Uh, fellas, like I said, we have some shit to talk about. Uh, we have a little recap of the opening week of the Prem. We have some huge transfer talk to get into um, some monumental transfers in the world. Um, And finally, we have our 10 minute segment coming back again. But before we dive into that, it's been about a month, but St. Louis City is back this weekend, fellas. Uh, We have a Sunday kickoff this week uh, where we take on Austin at home, a repeat of our first game as a club uh, a couple of months back. Um, The the team should be healthy. Um, Are we looking forward to having the St. Louis team back? I, f- I feel bad for Matt. I feel bad for Madison 
It's like one of those things where it's now footy in the morning, kind of footy in the afternoon, and then city now at night. Um, <laughs> so I'm jacked for it. It's 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 kind of be one of those the, sort of the first scenarios where you know, United and City are both playing at once. But I also think we have to think like we're coming back top of the table and pretty damn healthy. So we have Nielsen back. So I think it's one of those where we have a really good shot to sort of get ourselves to to first place or at least a couple home games in the playoffs. So I'm jacked for the second half of the season. I'm so excited to see Nilsson. Like <laughs> we're we're literally we have a whole new player that's just not played for us yet. So I'm pumped to see where he comes in. Speaking feels like Klaus, new... feels like Klaus hasn't played for us either. So that's it's, also true. Not, if he if he's not dead, it'll be nice to have him back at some point. Also late, later of this like month, early September. New players. What about that left winger or whatever that we signed? Is he like part of the team yet? Is that not a thing? Like. You know what I'm talking about? I think this week in St. Louis, the yeah. Icelandic guy. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was visa kid? related. I think it was the. I think it was what, yeah. what they were sorting out. I think it's this week. Is I think it's this week is when he'll join the team. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we have a lot to look forward to with that. I, I think. Yeah, getting the lads healthy. Hopefully, we see a Klaus. I for damn sure we'll see Nilsson. Um, but also getting all of the rest of the guys healthy will be big again. Um, and Austin's been up and down all season. They've gotten better since we played them. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but, but gentlemen, we have opening weekend of the Prem to discuss. And let me just say before we talk shit, because we have a lot to talk about. It is such a blessing that the Prem is back. Like, you know, getting all pumped all day Friday to watch Man City play, um, waking up for the 630 game on Saturday, waking up early on Sunday and just having footy all morning. It's just it's the stuff that dreams are made of. So without further ado, uh, Winks, your game is first. You had a 2 one victory over Nottingham Forest, uh, probably an expected win from your end. But fill us in on how you felt. Yeah, uh, not not super happy about having the earliest game of the season to start. Was pretty tired waking up, but nonetheless, it was, it was at least you know we we scored early like like we kind of did all last all last season. Um, so the beginning of the game was entertaining. Uh, I don't know if you guys watched it or not, but Nottingham had a pretty good chance early on in like the first quarter of the game. Um, really, before we had any big chances, but shortly after, um, Gabriel Martinelli had this insane Maradona heel pass into the six yard box to Eddie and Ketia. And then he, he slotted at home. I think it tipped off one of their center backs and, and went past uh, Matt Turner, which, which is weird to say um, kind of, kind of bittersweet that we got to play him in our first game. Um, always been a fan of his and sucks to see him go, but uh, I, th- I thought he played pretty well considering, um, but really want to hone in on, on Martinelli's, little bit of skill move there that was beautiful insane and move did he it mean gorgeous. it it was gr- it, it, it was gross i think he it meant was, it probably it was gross if 100%. he meant it it was sick if he meant it it was cool if he didn't mean it then it's a cat says you but either way that was beautiful and then arguably even more beautiful was uh was Saka's finish from outside the 18 nuts uh good lord man and i think that you know something something that we saw a decent amount last year, but not in as many positions as we saw this game was kind of the amount of freedom that we had in the formation we played. I think that traditionally when we attack, we're in some version of a, of a three, four, three, whether that's with a box midfield or a diamond midfield. And this game, because Nottingham played five in the back um, for, for a lot of times they, when Saka and Martinelli weren't making runs in behind, they had their wing backs um, pressing, Saka and Martinelli pretty hard. So I think something that I noticed was we, first of all, we had party starting at right back, um, which was unique and uh, Saliba and Ben white in the middle. But when we shifted to that three back formation, when we were attacking uh, party sat right in front of that front three. And then it looked like we almost played like a three, one, three, three um, to, to try and counter that. And a lot of times, you know, the, the space in this game, while Nottingham had five in the back, everybody else in front of them played extremely narrow. So the, sp- the space was on the wings in front of our wingers. And so in that three one three three, we saw Declan Rice and Martin Odegaard swing out and, and spread the field wide and receive the ball there and then go central to either Kai or um, 
Kai or Rice or whoever. And and I, I thought that technically, tactically, you know, we, we did really well on that end. Um, you know, we also saw Thomas Party rotating with Ben White, Rice rotating with Timber uh, as our, you know, our wing center backs there. But it was cool because on Sokka's goal, we saw William Saliba up on the other end of the 18-yard box. So it was really cool to know that we can have all these players play different positions when we're attacking, knowing that we're going to be covered on the back end. Um, really, really fun, fun game to watch. And they were a fun team to watch last year. But I think that, you know, the way that we played collectively on Saturday morning, you know, just kind of continued that trend of, of being a fun team to watch. Um, most worried about how we continue to close out games. I think that there's still a bit of, uh, intensity, the intensity that we need to provide, whether we're up four goals or one goal, um, towards the end of the game, I still think there's a, we tend to get a little lackadaisical. And we saw that when, when Nottingham scored their third goal or sorry, their, their first goal, but the third goal of the game. Um, so I think that moving forward, obviously Timber got hurt. That sucks to see. I think, you know, they didn't say anything specific about an ACL tear, but they said a, a ligament in his right knee, um, so he'll be out for several months, which which sucks. And, you know, Zinchenko's not back from his calf injury yet. So I, I'm guessing it'll be Tamiyasu or Kieran Tierney, assuming that Newcastle isn't still keen on signing him before the transfer window's up. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they do there. But overall, very, very happy. I think that we just need to get better at, you know, staying locked in the entire 90 minutes and extra time. Um, yeah, I feel like Arsenal is like a fun team to watch for the first 45. Like they come out and blitz, they play really well in the first half, and then they really do fade. And I think they're pretty lucky to walk away with all three points. And, and not saying that like Nottingham Force was like crazy dangerous after that initial chance and the one that they scored. But I don't know, man. I, I think when you play a, a stronger opponent, that is something to watch, especially as the season goes further. Absolutely. I com- I'm kind of shocked by your very, very happy take on a 2-1 beating of Nottingham Forest. Buddy, I you fucking know. tied Liverpool. You have I, no I know, room to Liverpool talk. It's the first, all week, all of the, it's the first exactly. week of the season. I know. Exactly. And he just, I was just very shocked by it. I didn't think they had a great performance. I didn't think it was very, very impressive. I was kind Buddy, of we, by his take. That's all I was we, we, had, we had 80% possession, 90% pass accuracy. And they could have tied three points and got... Buddy, I didn't watch a lick of the entire game, but I'm with Nick, bro. That's insane. <laughs> you're like, yeah, fuck those guys. Yeah, um, to be fair, I, I, I that. If you're wanting to win a title and you're very, very happy with that performance, I'm shocked. That I thought, I thought that party. I, I will say that. I was just going to say that. I'm just. I think it sucks for Timber. Like I, I think yeah, it man. really, really sucks for Timber. He, he's the guy that we were talking last week that he could have been my argument for signing in the season because I think he's that quality. And I think it really sucks, especially the first game. Um, I mean, it's a good. Like it's a good thing in the way that like. Arsenal is not going to be as good because of it, but at the same time, like you hate to see it happen to a player of that cal- like caliber. Yeah, you don't root for this. Also, I could be capping here, but the actual like injury itself when it happened, it looked like he was obviously shaken up, but it didn't look like he was like. Yeah, they they had talked about him coming back on the second half. Yeah, um, and then obviously that didn't happen. But I th- I think that they did an initial testing on him and. You know, he could, I guess he could walk fine, but then they did another another assessment, and they were like, "Yeah, you're you're out for a while." Yeah. So super super unlucky. But yeah, very I unlucky. Think that, I think that that's going to be the name of the game across the board this season. Is you know, like every season, how healthy can can these top guys stay, and then on top of that, how deep you know are a lot of our teams in in positions like that. But yeah, we'll see. I th- I think the name of the game for Arsenal this season is going to be patience. Um, teams are going to sit in a low block against them and it's how patient can they be throughout the game. They like to blitz right off the bat. And if they don't break a team down in the first 15 minutes, can they still be patient to continue to break teams down and maybe do it in the 60th versus, you know, earlier in the game. So um, congrats yeah. on all three points. I know that not everyone gets to experience three points in an opening game of the season. So I just want to give credit where credit's due and say um, it feels nice to have some company in there. So um, Tottenham Brentford. But- Grow up. What? Um, Tottenham Brentford. Uh, oh, a, they got a, a Harry Caneless Tottenham. 
Um, and as you alluded to earlier, a non-terrorist football Tottenham. Uh, the boys looked fun to watch. It might be reverse terrorism. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like self-sabotage. It's so fun. Um, which it might be. I'm still trying to – you guys, like, like Winks was just talking about tactically how, you know, they, the shape changed with everything with Arsenal. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how we play and what the positions are that these players are taking up. Um, but aside from that, yeah, they they had like 70% possessions, the most they've had ever, ever in the premier league ever. Um, matters is class. Like oh, yeah. the, the guy, that, that ball was insane. The ball was insane. He does it, you know, four times out of five. Um, everything went through him. Like it, they said it in the commentary, but like all offensive threats at all, he had his blueprint on it. So that's super fun. I would have enjoyed him and Harry Kane as a partnership, but um, that isn't going to happen. So it's like Sonny's team. I think my biggest concerns are the wingers, how they're able to actually get involved, and Sonny in general. I'm worried about the guy. I need some more. I need some more form from him. Uh, he was named club captain, so I'm assuming that that means he's going to play a lot. Uh, which I it was, you know, that's a that's a call that I agree with. But uh, didn't happen with Harry Maguire though, so you never know. <laughs> it's a good point. Um, but yeah, I, I thought Basuma Basuma was unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. I I have a new agenda. Yeah, he was class. You guys are, are going to hear about this all year. This guy is insane. He's Brighton's original best midfielder. We're forgetting that True. he was purchased for forty million not even two years ago. So, you know, need to throw that stat out before we even talk about the Caicedo drama. But uh he had 138 touches. He was dispossessed zero times. He had five five out of six completed dribbles. And every time he was on the ball he just was like oozing confidence and like the oh, yeah. ability he had was ridiculous. So we saw him stifled last year under under Conte and his terrorist attitude towards everything. Um, so I'm super excited to see Benton Kerr come back in the midfield three. Wink, or, uh, not Winks, dear Lord. Um, Skippy yeah. had a hard time. Skippy had a hard time with it. The, the midfield three play this weird rotation to where Skippy was a lot of times in a like 10 role. Like he was underneath Kulisevsky and Richie, kind of up next to Madison. Um, and I think that's where, you know, Benton Kerr will, will thrive. Uh, Emerson and, and Destiny Udogi, very high on that kid. He had a great game. Um, they play, like, in front of the center backs next to Basuma in, like, a 2-3-2-3-5. Two, three, two, three, five. I, dude, I don't know. That, that math, that math ain't math. sense. That math ain't yeah. math, and there's too many players, so um, – yeah, no, I, I thought there were a lot of really positive things to take from it. Brentford's really tough to play at home. They're 15 unbeaten uh, in their last home games. So, you know, at one point there with some really positive play, they dominated the second half. There's things that I'm seeing that have me very excited. I think, you know, after today and United's performance, I'm way more excited for Saturday than I would have been. I, you know, everything's built up for you guys to just pummel us. But uh, I don't know. There's, it's going to be super exciting. There's going to be goals. I can confidently tell you we leave two at the back all the time. So uh, <laughs> those direct balls to Anthony and uh, whoever's on your guys' left side, is, are there, that's going to be it. So excited. Be fun. Um, big, uh, big L early in the game, though. Christian Romero, right after scoring the goal, says, mm, I haven't <laughs> got I'm coming out. So I, I had I rewatched the game today and they said that apparently the staff thought and understood and played it off as a concussion substitution. So one of the new rules that they'd implemented last year. And apparently they didn't fill out the right sheet to make it a concussion substitution. So they lost their sub on Romero in the beginning. Um, fucking idiots. Even though he, he did actually have a concussion, he's going to be out six days. So I'm not sure what that looks like for uh, next week. But uh, yeah, that was a bummer. What a ball, though, dude. Matters yeah, is something. Well, the thing is, is like I, I think he got the concussion on 
the head to head tackle that he made like five yeah. minutes earlier, just fucking annihilating whoever in the back 100%. of the head. And the head and ball goal that, in slow motion, he like oh. his neck was like backwards. And like he, <laughs> the ball was it with so much pace that it kind of just smoked his face. And went in, yeah. and like he immediately stood up and died, did not celebrate, and was kind of like, "Shit." <laughs> yeah, and for him, like it takes a lot to like get that oh, guy down. Oh yeah, so, oh yeah. I so, think we win that yeah. game if he stays on the field, but uh, yeah. I don't think Sanchez really was awful. So yeah, he can have I that. Agree. Um, the other thing that I just do want to say quickly, you alluded to it, but Brentford man also doing it. You know, without yeah, Ivan Tony. Good. Yeah, yeah, they're they're still doing it. I think Thomas Frank is continuously showing that he's just uh, an animal tactically. Yeah. He gets the right guys in and is playing the the football that he wants. So um, I'm looking forward to this upcoming weekend, like you said, uh, where our two teams play each other. But um, looks better than last year, I'll tell you that much uh, for you all. Um, moving on to the game of the weekend. Uh, for a lot of reasons, the game of the weekend, um, maybe not from the score line. Does it look like the, the game of the weekend, but certainly from the action in the first half, specifically a one, one tie, the mid table derby between Liverpool and Chelsea. Man, that uh, was last year. Can't be saying that the mid table derby, <laughs> uh, but is it one of you 10th? Is it the other 11th right now? Oh. It's like quite literally the yep. mid table derby. <laughs> we call that the turn, fellas. It's the turn. <laughs> um, Butch, uh, I guess we'll get you out of the way of your thoughts on the game before anyone else can put any sort of spin on it. Let's hear your thoughts on how a 1-1 game did for Liverpool. Well, <laughs> no way. He's going to put it right to the side. Yeah, he's going to put it right to the yeah. side. You know, he's right to the side. <laughs> right How, convenient. How convenient of him that that's what happened. While we're waiting I, for him. I, I, I think he was going to say he, he was happy to sign Caicedo and Lavia. Like, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> I don't know what you guys think, but that's what I think he was going to say. No, Most I, likely I that's what happened. But Nicky, Jake, uh, Nick and Jake from the Chelsea side of things, obviously uh, good to get a point. Uh, a tie isn't what you wanted, but you had to think that you looked better than last year. Oh, yeah, sorry. absolutely. I think uh, one point was certainly not what we wanted from that game, and I don't think that that, that was deserved based on possession and shots and, and all that. I will say that uh, Mo Salah still looks as dangerous as always. I mean, that pass to that Diaz ball. was unreal. Disgusting. Unbelievable. Literally nothing you can do about it. Um, really, really, really happy with our back three. I think DeSassi, Silva, uh, and Colwell were awesome, uh, except for five seconds of falling asleep. Uh, I think Enzo was pure class. Uh, Nico Jackson was incredible. Um, Raheem Sterling can literally not ever play another minute for Chelsea and I'd be the happiest man in the world. <laughs> Just a waste of space. Um, yeah, Nick, what do you think? Um, yeah, I have a, I have a couple takeaways, but I will say I kind of agree with you with the, um, I'm not super thrilled about the draw. I think we definitely um, could have got uh, points out of that game. Um, I think we had four debuts and we uh, came out asleep off the start. Um, and that's why you kind of saw Liverpool take, um, possession of the ball early on. And I think the reason why they had those two chances, um, even though that one was called back, even then I was a little nervous. Um, and my first big kudos I want to give to is to Poach. Um, I think he made some in-game adjustments with Enzo and it drastically changed the position and where we were possessing the ball. Um, I think Liverpool came out with a lineup um, that was pretty offensive with uh, – Blanking on his name, sorry, but he was uh, playing in Cam instead of Striker. What's his John Gakpo? Gakpo. Um, what Gakpo? Yeah, Gakpo was playing, and I think early on Enzo was kind of playing defensively, keeping him in mind. And I think Poach got into his ear and told him to play more offensively. So then Gakpo was kind of chasing him defensively, and it kind of switched the entire game for us. Um, so I definitely think there was bright spots, um, like I was. Um, kind of saying before, but the big thing for me is definitely the effort. Um, that's kind of why I'm happy to wear this shirt again was because of the effort the team showed. Um, I also think that has a lot to do with poach again. 
Um, I saw a lot of quotes from players that said that they would literally run through a wall for the man. So um, that makes me happy that that's kind of what he's bringing um, to our locker room. Um, so yeah, those are As the Andy just that, fucking dies hearing. I know. I, I, and if, it, um, yeah. and that, but I freaking love no, it. And it's I, cool I think because. He's the guy. No, the the reason one of the reasons he was fired was apparently uh, how relentless the the actual you know training sessions are, and how sick of everyone was doing it. They were tired of the guy. So, yeah, keep your passion for now, but uh, don't let that one come back to bite you. I saw something that was pretty funny. That was like Jurgen Klopp. It was like the last last ten times he's faced Chelsea. Like they've had four different managers or so, or something <laughs> along those lines, or, or something along those lines. Or, now, no. I was I was really impressed with I was really impressed with Nico Jackson and and Enzo. I think Enzo is playing himself into like top midfielders in the Premier League conversation. Um, I, th- I think the biggest thing for Chelsea is going to be the rotation of like how can they work all these guys on because I genuinely mean this when I say they don't have a locker room that's big enough to fit all of their players. So like how they're going to keep all of these Not guys anymore. they signed happy? That's totally we got, different. We got now. rid of a lot. Yeah, we got rid but of a like, lot. And we have yeah. so many guys on loan right now. We have so many yeah, kids I mean, that are under the age of 21 that are on loan. We just put another one out uh, today. Cassidy is when it moved out again. So 100%, 100%. But I think you have to look at it. It's just the, the center backs that you sort of have. You made signings. You have the young guys you're coming with. I think the biggest issue is you're betting on every single one of these young guys to be worth their value. Absolutely. Like, 100%. You know, I agree. So that, yeah, that's, that. that's why it's like, it's, that's why it's such a high risk sort of like way to do it. But like, Long term, if you win a couple titles, it's it's one hundred percent worth it. But yeah. I think the biggest thing is allowing those young players to develop while also still continuing to win games. Well, it's I like Carney, like Carney Chukwemenka, like it played last game, and I don't think he plays for another ten games. You know what I mean? Like might play against Luton in two games, but apart from that, like now with Caicedo and the eminent signing of, of Lavia, like I think it it makes it really tough for for some of these other guys to get in. I think it makes it tough for Connor Gallagher to get in. So it's like, is that going to be more money in our pocket for that? I like, I don't know. I think it's if if I could go on paper and say that I have Enzo, Caicedo, and Lavia starting every game in our midfield with our back three and Chilwell and James on the side, I think we have a pretty good chance of being a pretty dominant team. What what yeah, actually ha- what actually on. happened with uh, with Reese? I think they Nothing. said it was precautionary. He's tired. Yeah, I think they said, said it was tired. precautionary. Yeah. I never saw anything after the game, and obviously we were talking yeah, shit as soon Potch, as he went off. Yeah, Potch came out and said it was just tired, as all of us. I also think the piggybacking off what Dobbs was saying, because I completely agree about Enzo. I think he's going to continue to be a class midfielder for us and in the Premier League for years to come. I think um, Caicedo signing is just going to it's gonna make it so much better. even more, because yeah. I think he's going to have a lot more freedom now, um, and I'm super excited. Yeah, I, agree. I think I think the the big the bigger concern here is definitely, and this isn't like just to necessarily shit on Liverpool while Butch isn't here, but like I think coming away from that game, like there is drastic concern, and what I mean by that is like Liverpool was dangerous, but they're strictly dangerous on the counter, and like you take that the Chelsea team, what Chelsea team is going to be a month from now, like that's not a one one game, like you put them up against the midfield that can keep the ball and that can defend halfway decent, like it sort of takes the way that they play out of the game, so I like. I think that's the biggest concern is like they're forced to play Gakpo at the 10 because they didn't have anybody else to genuinely play there right now. Right. Like you can slide in a Harvey Elliott or you can slide in a Curtis Jones, but like those are the options. And so I think that's where that concern comes from. And Butch and I were texting about this. So I know he'd agree. Like they have to do something like they have to somehow bring another player. in, or it's gonna, It could potentially be a long season. All clubs. So you say they're going to buy Tyler Adams sense. and Connor Gallagher. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. They have to do something. Um, yeah. We can't have uh, you know VVD defending with his aura uh, too much longer. Trent actually put in some uh, <laughs> Trent put in some tackles, which is good to see. You know he did. He, he he really played some better defense. wasn't great, but I don't know. As as someone that didn't have a dog in the fight, I'm stoked with a tie uh, for United in in that that for you all. But um, I was impressed with Chelsea man. Nico Jackson looked. I think that kid's gonna kids, be a kid's gonna be the truth, wow. man. Um, I was really happy with him, but he also missed some some chances that I was like, "All right, we need to be finishing." Those. I think he, he had one, one that he should have had yeah. on, on target, a target, but that's it. But I think he but created that's a my, lot. That's from my biggest. Like, no, you're right. I, I'm that's my biggest gripe with with spending nearly a billion 
And like, not one of those was like, no, seriously though, like you spend all that money and not one is like a proven goal score. Like Nico may be a fucking 30 goal scorer in a couple of years, but like you spend all that money and you're kind of relying on a kid and bro, how to come back from it, like an injury. That's right. Get money for concerned. longevity. Yeah, yeah. I think that's an issue. Think, yeah, of, of course. I, I a hundred percent believe that in Cuckoo being out for this amount of time and not being able to work with Jackson in that is tough. I think that that definitely hurts yeah, Jackson sucks. value as well. Totally. Um, now Dobes. <laughs> we, uh, we won today, the Monday game, the last game of we the weekend. It. Uh, in, we a win. Oh, in, a, it in a convincing Stole fashion, a we, we dominated Wolves. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. we, All right. All right, listen, listen here, listen, listen here, listen here, hundred percent Stonewall pen. No, no, no doubt about it. It's a pen. Let's not sit here and pretend like a month from now, two months from now, Referee decisions aren't going to go for the teams because it's going to happen. Yes, that's going to happen at the Stratford end in the 94th minute, of course. We can sit here, we can talk about the performance all we want. Yes, it was terrible. We we're absolutely terrible, horrible. But then again, if you look at us last season, the last loss at home we had was our first game of the season. And you want to peak at the middle of the season, towards the end of the season, versus when you do in the, in the beginning. If United would have had six points when their first two games last year, like we're in a whole different conversation than we are. So at this point of the season, when we're integrating an Onana, we're integrating a Mount, we're integrating sort of all these new pieces. I'll take the result. I'm not happy with the performance. Would I have liked us to go out there and look like Man City? Of course. But at the same time, like I'm not going to be angry by any means that we squeaked out three points. This is our last six games that we've played against Wolf, dating back to 2020. 0 0, 1 0, 2 1, 1 0, 1 0, 2 0, 1 0. Every single time that we have and played we're Wolves, still it's taking like, the over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. Every, yeah, every single time every single time that we have played Wolves over the past couple of seasons, it seems to be this tough game. And you have to give credit to Wolves because they one thousand percent deserve to win today. They probably could have won three three or four nothing if they would have converted their chances. But at the same time, I'm gonna sit here and complain about the fact that like we had a bad performance and we came away with three points. Like, absolutely not. Like there's a lot of things that we need to improve on. Our midfield needs to be better. We need to make a few more signings, um, but we're also integrating a new system. So if you're like at this point, tell me what take a one nothing game win against Wolves the first game of the season, like sign me up. But now then the performance does have to improve because it is a little concerning going into Spurs next week. But today you got to be happy just with three points. I'm just shocked with uh, all the money you spent this transfer window that you didn't buy a proven goal scorer. <laughs> well, we did. We got back issues. <laughs> He's got back like, issues. He's like he's 12, right? Toronto, so, you know, he's got to wrestle a little. I'm I gonna, mean, that, I'm that's gonna... like the... No. Go you can, you can, you can get your words in if you could, but I, you know, alternate side of the view here. No, my, you know, my... We, we, my... we got Mr. 70% possession for the first time, and he's going to be like, I know ball knowledge. I, <laughs> you know, like... I I love that take Dobes, and if you can play poorly and come away with three points, that's great. I love that. Um, <clears throat> early, early stages, uh, it's too early to like you know write the story of it. But from what I was seeing right away, uh, Bruno and Mount is going to take some playing together. They were occupying so many of the same spaces, like so many of the same spaces. I thought that that was fascinating. Um, Garnacho had a stinker, and Lissandro Martinez Huge. had a stinker. Dude, Gar- that was the worst Huge. I've seen Garnacho play. Yeah, so what, the, start? what I appreciate is that uh, Ten Hag yanked Lissandro Martinez at half. Um, and you all know how much I love Licha. Like, I, I think that he's class. He played horrible in the first half. He he made a tackle that he should not have made 17 minutes in, got booked. He could have made another tackle to get a second yellow uh, in the first half. Oh, he, he was like he was like this and close yes, to ripping him down. Too. Yeah, so close. <laughs> but, you know, the, the other thing is uh, – we we talked about it a lot last year, but Rashford is not a nine man. He he is not an out and out striker, and he's wasted in that space. Um, you know the most threatening he looked all game is he drifted out to the left one time. They played him a long ball over the top, and other than that, he was completely out of the game. So you know it's a little bit early to write the write the story, and I'll just repeat: it's always great when you play like shit and come away with three points. That's awesome, and also like 
give, give him shit if you want. Onana definitely was a nail on pen. Both Dobes and I in the group chat were like, yeah, that's a pen for sure. But he, um, but he also stood on his head. Dude. I was going to say He that, also man. stood like, on his head. He played great. Um, you know, I felt really confident with him back there. Yeah. You know, he was great with his hands, really commanding in the box, made some other great saves. Um, so, yeah, I, three points is three points. And I think we'll really, really, really be tested against Spurs. Um, I don't know what to expect from that one, especially with Spurs Dude, playing like this new system. So, um, yeah, those are my thoughts on the game. But, yeah, the Bruno Mount thing, we'll have to figure that out. Bro, the midfield was Swiss cheese. Cunha and yeah. Matias Nunez were absolutely Terrible, having their way with you guys. And I think, obviously, the issue is them not being able to finish anything in the final third, which is kind of an issue that they've had for uh, forever. Um, but I I was like in shock and awe watching those guys turn Bruno and Mao inside out with just like – strength and just agility things that like everyone on sit on United looked leggy and slow and Casemiro was a step off I thought and when you're when your keepers your highlight then you know that's probably not your best draft so uh, yeah, that's fair yeah I thought I thought it was abysmal and I agree you're not going to be mad that you took three points away great I would feel the same way I can't deny that but like uh, I I don't know it looks pretty um What's the word I'm looking for? Like there was no Shit. fluidity. There was no. There was no like. It's like they played together for the I first know, time I, today. I, yeah, like, no, no, I, no, I, no identity. Similar was, to yeah, Chelsea got, all of last season. I got I got two eyeballs Three. in a brain. It, it was it was shit. Like 100. percent I texted Hen at like the 65th minute. I said, if we're playing Arsenal or City right now, like this is a four or five nothing game, and it's not even close. Um. So I I do think that. It'll be interesting to see because we need another midfielder to bring in. Like that, we need an Amrabat so bad because who I'm who like I think Casemiro was a step off it. I, yes, I think Mount and Bruno like have to figure a way to like play together and not occupy the same space. But like Casemiro was a step off it. He's been a step off it since the preseason, um, which is extremely concerning because he's supposed to be our rock this year. Like Amrabat's not supposed to replace him. Amrabat's supposed to play with him. You yeah. know what I mean? So. I think that's the biggest concerning thing with me is like Varane stepped up and was a leader. Bruno had some special moments where like Casemiro is supposed to be a rock in there that shuts that midfield down. And Kuna just had his way with dude, everybody. Dude, it it was wasn't insane. like it was just Mount, Mount and Bruno. It no. was like he, tur- he turned Casemiro a few times and just went on these darting runs through the middle. And that's where Casemiro is supposed to be there to put in a tackle or if not get a yellow card. There was a few times where he even like missed the tackle to try to get a yellow card. Yeah. And that's just, yeah, you know what I mean? It was just, that's where it's yeah. extremely concerning, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, definitely not a, a confidence instilling game and you alluded to it. That was the worst we've seen Garnacho play. Um, so we, we gotta, we gotta figure it out. We, we gotta get better for this weekend, but um, you know, that that's the weekly recap. We're going to get back to this uh, every week. We'll be able to recap these games in the prem. Um Fellas, some really big transfer talk uh, going on in the world right now. Um, there, there's three pretty big ones that I want to touch on. Um, but starting off, Harry Kane to Bayern official. Uh, you can take Harry Kane out of Spurs, but you can't take Spurs out of Harry Kane. Losing his first game <laughs> in a final 3 uh, nothing to RB Leipzig, which is funny now for you, Hoof, because, you know... He's not on your team anymore, <laughs> but you know I do want to pass the mic to you first, as you have uh, the only the only fandom of Harry Kane as your former player. How do you feel about the move? Uh, yeah, talk us through it. I, I was very happy they lost that game. I can for sure say that. <laughs> um, I I it's it's one of those. So you know, I mean, he wanted everything. He 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 did everything for the club. Um, the money is not coming back, you know, I, like I said, but yeah, it sucks. Like when your goals, when a percentage of your goals from the last, however many years come from one guy, you, uh, you're gonna miss out. Like uh, there were times against Brentford where Richie would receive the ball and, you know, not score and times that something would have been different with that other guy. You know what I mean? Like you, like I watched it and was the guy watching. That should not be named <laughs> that other guy. <laughs> that yeah. other guy. When, when you see it and like, see, you know, even just a, a slightly sloppy touch change the passage of play. Like those tiny things are, you know, now something that I have to worry about 
every game. Um, that's a bummer, but like no one's bigger than the club. You can't let you can't sit here and just be like, you know, woe is me. What are you gonna do? You have to go around and do something. You have to yeah. go and perform. I thought the Sonny being captain, he pulled the, the team over at the beginning of the Brentford game for yeah, their pregame cool. huddle. He pulled them over to the away fans and just kind of their pregame, you know, breakdown in front of the traveling fans. And I thought that wasn't. I didn't think it was cheesy. I thought that was really cool. And I thought it was really like, a, hey, we totally understand what just happened. Like everyone in this locker room knows that Harry Kane just left. Everyone like it really was more of a realization and, and a message to the fans to be like, we have to keep just playing. We like it. There's no looking back. Um, so, you know, high hopes down the road. Maybe you see him back in the prem with Spurs when he's like 36, just so we can cap off a couple goals and, you know, catch a record but um yeah you you just, you just gotta move there's just nothing you can do about it spurs are, are worse off without him that's undeniable um where do you take the funds and and change the future that's to be seen so it sucks yeah it's football it's a business i hope he wins trophies with byron it's like losing your virginity to a prostitute so congrats buddy <laughs> Have fun with that Bundesliga title. Dude, personally, I, I hate it. I like I hate that he's at Bayern. I think Sucks. that he's gonna like fade off into obscurity, to be honest with you. Like I just like whenever players go to Bayern, I just literally couldn't give two shits about them. It, there's just something about it that I just don't give a fuck about. And I know that I'm not gonna watch him. Dobes, you're gonna tune into Bayern Munich games. I get that. I'm, I'm- I'm, I'm polar opposite, bro. Like to me, it's like there's I, I look at it as like my fat mob favorites. What I mean by that is like I have like well, I have like AC Milan like to watch like Pulisic play. Like the players that I like watching, I like to know if they're in the lineup so I can turn into the game. And like for me, I've always enjoyed watching Spurs like strictly to watch Harry Kane. Like to me, he's one of those players that like I don't necessarily care where he's playing. I enjoy watching him play because to me, like I've, I've said this like forever, he's the all around striker and he's somebody that like. I don't have the same sort of affiliation as Hoove to where like he left my club. Like I want to see him win a trophy because I think he's a player that deserves to win trophies. Like I think me he's too. a player that has de- yeah. deserved it his whole career. So like for me, I'm going to watch Byron because I like watching Harry Kane. Um, but I do think it sucks for the league um, because I really think that like this Spurs team with him, like after kind of what we saw week one could be pretty fucking dangerous going forward with him. So I think that's what sucks for the league, but you know, Very true. Very true. We- I'm very interested to see what uh, Daniel Levy adds to the stadium with the uh, $100 million. That's instead of great. Players. Another, <laughs> another Beyonce <laughs> tour. Yeah. <laughs> You'll probably get another F1 track. He's going to – More, more beer stands. He's bringing yeah. the Beatles back from the dead for one show <laughs> at Tottenham Hotspur yeah, Stadium. Bro. Cost him $100 mil. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, Going from Harry Kane to the other bombshell signing, uh, Caicedo. That drama – that is the last year and a half is finally over. Break, break it down. Break it down from Klopp Green. Okay. So uh, let's take it back to last year. This man says, <laughs> I want to go to Arsenal. It's been my dream to go to Arsenal. Writes a note to the fans saying, thank you so much. Deserby in an interview basically says, he's a fucking idiot. Why would you do that? <laughs> Doesn't go to Arsenal. Plays the rest of the season. Balls out. Has, you know, has a great season. Then uh, it's clear in the summer transfer that he wants to go somewhere. Linked with everyone under the sun. Wants most, to go to a big club. Most notably last week where Jurgen Klopp says that a deal has been agreed with Kaiseido in a public interview. Uh, all for Kaiseido the next wow. day to come out and say, I don't want to go to Liverpool. And we have <laughs> what is now the record signing in the Premier League. Uh, Moyes Caicedo to Chelsea for a fuck ton of money, $146 million. <laughs> um, Chelsea fans, I imagine you're elated. Uh, talk us through it. I'm super pumped. Um, I think uh, the most important positions on the field are now filled for us for a while, and I love the talent that we have. Um, as far as the price, I think that's – I've said it multiple times. I think it's going to be the new norm. It's just going to continue to go up. Um, so I I think everyone's going to be continue to spend close to $200 million, um, a transfer window. Um, 
but yeah, I'm I'm super excited. Um, I'm also think it's awesome that he literally publicly just shat on Liverpool um, right before joining us. So that, that makes me super excited as well. Bro, Daniel yeah. Levy's never spending two hundred million in a window. I don't, <laughs> that's what I, don't, I was going to say. It cannot be the new normal. Tottenham's going to operate the way yeah, well. that Tottenham operates. Who picked the mic and started laughing? He's, he's, he's going to buy the Beatles tour, man. He's just going to oh play in uh, <laughs> This team would be insane. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm I'm super excited. I'm really excited to see how he and Enzo complement each other. I think it's going to be awesome i'm praying that it works out for the eight or nine years or however fucking long both of them are signed for um it could be one of those great partnerships so i'm really excited to see uh, what that turns into and whoever's going to play in that third spot really excited to see i think really Liverpool kind of fucked here. you guys i absolutely because, like I <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. Liverpool, if, liverpool, if liverpool didn't come in with that fee like like let's talk, like we're going to talk about our top ten midfielders later, but like Caicedo's not my list, and so like that's the thing is you're paying a price yeah. tag for like Jude Bellingham. Yeah. So like I think that yes, of course he's he's a world class midfielder. Like he's got the ability to continue to develop. I think that's what sucks is Liverpool one hundred percent fucked you guys. Oh, if you wanted if you wanted Chelsea that bad, like Chelsea should have gone and got him. And waiting this long sort of hurt you guys because it allowed Liverpool to make that offer, and then Brighton could say we're not we're not giving you anything less than than they offered. I almost think Liverpool knew that he wasn't even going to accept it and just threw out yeah. a crazy well, offer. I think he's, the, he's the perfect player for Liverpool. Yeah. Like he fits yeah, Liverpool. Wasn't style. Making I think that they team. knew that he did not. He wanted to come to Chelsea. I think they knew that early. That's why. That's why Liverpool's so dumb. Is like that's why it's agree personal terms, then be the dumbass to go make an offer because now the entire world knows that Liverpool have 110 million to spend. Yeah. And so even if they do go get somebody, they're going to get blue balls for everybody that they want to sign. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I I can't believe that Klopp did that, and and not just because of the banter, but Klopp is a senior manager, bro. He like you don't do that. That is such a bad, seventh year, man. Like He's so so <laughs> so in the last in the last couple of months, Liverpool have been all out that they have signed Jude Bellingham, they've signed Mason Mount, and now they've signed Casado, and they haven't gotten any of them. And so, like, what a midfield we, we were, that would have been. We were we were kind of talking shit before we started recording, but Liverpool's ability to pull players, specifically midfielders, is dwindling quickly. And must I remind you now? All of our clubs have gone through periods where there's nothing notable. Like we can all say, like, oh yeah, I can't believe he played for our team, but it wasn't so long ago that Liverpool was starting players that you've never seen play for anyone else. And I don't think that they're going to fade off into that level of obscurity, but the lack of ability to pull and the lack of belief in a long-term project at Liverpool does have to be concerning for Liverpool fans, um, potentially even for Klopp. Like, you know, at one point, one of the best managers in the world and can't get any of his midfield targets through the door. It's a problem. I think compare the compare the projects. You know what I mean? Like if you just like strictly look at like take Absolutely. European football out of that, even though Chelsea's twelfth, you look at Chelsea's project and the direction they're heading versus Liverpool's, and this isn't even like yes, I do love shitting on Liverpool, but at the same time, like look at the direction their project's heading. Like they just got rid of all of these like older players. And not only that, to me, and we're familiar with this, but it seemed like they were trying to make that Caicedo signing because like the Fenway Sports Group's under pressure. Oh yeah, like they have been re- they have been receiving so much hate from their fans that like it seemed to me like they were going out and trying to splash this money like hey we're going to get you this player to sort of get the pressure off their back and it didn't work so I think the the whole sort of thing is like if you're going to compare Chelsea and Liverpool in terms of where you think their trajectory is for the next ten years it's like I don't think they compare right now and I think that's strictly like Caicedo may love Chelsea Lavia may love Chelsea but I also think they see the project and they see the directions are going. Makes sense. <laughs> um, you know, you alluded to it earlier with the the scariness of an Enzo Caicedo partnership. Um, that is going to be gross. I I think it's going to be really good, and uh, it'll be and fast. You, I think I think part of it too is you look at the nineteen twenty year olds that they have under him too. Like you just give them two three years whether they're going on loan or they're staying with the club, like you have guys like Andre Santos, who's going to be absolutely disgusting too. Yeah, dude, he's going to be great. So it's like, 
Yeah, so it, it's it's tough to say that it's like just these two guys that are going to do it, but they have a group of like in hockey terms, there's like the National Predators are the team that always carry the best defensive core all the way through the minors, right? Like they have all these guys and they determine the market for what is sold or was sold for a long time. And like Doves was talking about like theories on like what Chelsea's doing. And I think they're buying 19 to 20 year olds and literally deciding what the fucking bank is for the next five years. Right. Like, I don't think it's, I think Moises Caicedo and Enzo are like the start of it, but like having these young players develop from them and then want to go on loan to other places, I think is a huge asset to Chelsea. Yeah. At least for the future. I was, I was texting Hendis. I almost think it seems like, because they are placing so much of a bet on these young players, but also these long contracts to where I was like, if Mudrick, for example, doesn't have a good next season or like good half a next season, like, He's going to look to get moved because Bully's going to want to cut his losses and also not pay him those wages for the next X amount of time. So, like, I think that's one of those things where if he pans out, it's like it's worth the money. But Absolutely. if he doesn't, you also you also have the ability to sort of move on and get rid of that money off your books. Right. And I think that's why when you look at the number of players that we've signed from the ages of 17 to 21, it's absurd. It's yeah. crazy. It's just uh, all over the board. It's not only midfielders; it's also forwards and 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 defense and everywhere. Yeah. I think it's it's nuts. Yeah, a high risk, high reward potentially for Chelsea's transfer strategy. Um, but last but not least, the the saddest of the transfers, in my opinion, announced just a couple of hours ago. Uh, Neymar officially going to the Saudi league for two years. Um, which is sad. Um, I am in the camp of thinking that Neymar was the third best player of our generation. Um, you know, ability wise, skill wise, watching him play third best of our generation and uh, perhaps one of, if not the most underrated player of our generation as well. And it's a shame that at 31, he's, he's going over there. I still think that he had a couple of years at the top. So curious y'all's thoughts on that, but Yeah. I think Gary Lineker said it. it was like when you leave Barcelona, like you're only going down. Yeah. Like there's there's no there's no step up. I think it's just like you said, there's not much to say. He's the most sad of all the players that have gone over there because like, when he was at Santos in Brazil, he was like the only player to not be in a top five league that was in like the top ten in the Belo New York voting. Yeah. Like no. this guy from the moment that the moment that he came on the scene was like the guy. I think it's just sad because we have seen him at his peak, but then we've also seen him at these like incredible lows. And I think that's kind of where he's at right now. Yeah. I wonder if the injuries are playing into consideration. Like, you know, other teams may not have taken the chance on him. Uh, you know, like he was linked at Chelsea for a little bit and linked at United for a week, but I wonder if the injuries are finally catching up with them and it's not going to be the same thing. But, um, you know, I was, I was actually thinking about this earlier, um, the longevity of Brazilian players isn't always there. Like Tiago Silva obviously is still doing it right now. Fernandinho did it until he was like 38 or whatever he was. But it's oftentimes that Brazilian players and specifically the flair players just pan out uh, a lot sooner and they don't have longevity. So I'm definitely going to pour one out tonight for Neymar in, in, in his uh, playing in Europe. It, it makes me really sad, but um General, we're moving into uh, our, our 10 minute segment. We're moving into uh, a new style of, uh, of ranking here. What we are going to try to do here on the Mecca of Banter podcast is uh, rank uh, or we're going to we're going to draft a midfield three. Uh, so this is all of the central midfielders in the world. We're going to do a snake style draft. Um, where we're going to go through up and down and we're going to try to pick our midfield three from all of the midfielders in the world. We've done some research on who we have maybe in our top 30 um, and we're going to go from there. So uh, Lucas, I'm going to let you uh, facilitate this. The, the, the order is we're going to start off with Hoover. We're going to move to Nick, to Dobes, to James, to Winks, to myself, myself again, Winks, James, Dobes, Nick, Hoove, Hoove again, all the way back down, and that will be our three. So, um, gentlemen, good luck. I'm we'll see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, 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 wait. You, you may need to give Andy the first pick here a uh, quick rundown again. Um, I'm picking <laughs> three. You're no, picking one. 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 You're picking one. one. We're doing three rounds. So you pick three rounds. Once the name's off the book, nobody else can pick them. So you pick your number yeah. one pick. Then it'll go to Nick. Then it'll go to me. And then it'll fantasy come back around. Style. Okay, fantasy, fantasy football, football style. 
So I have, so once the name's off the board, it's off the board. You got so the first I've got pick. Like, I've got like the Christian McCaffrey of picks. You do. Yeah. Well, Justin Jefferson this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's going to take, take Hoy Bear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go uh, the simple option in the best midfielder in the world and KDB it. So. Oh, shocker. Shocker, KDB. Hard to say no. I'm going we all with the that. easy Don't one. Burn. Yeah. All right. Nikki, who you got? This is a big choice. I think there are a lot of guys that could go to. This is a lot of. He's going to say Caicedo. Yeah, Enzo. He's deciding between Enzo and Caicedo. I'm trying to think who you guys are going to pick after, so I don't just get absolutely screwed. But I I got, I got four or five. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I did. I'm 21 names here. (laughs) I think I'm going to have to go with Tony Cruz. Good pick. Fine. Beautiful. Yeah, love it. Beautiful. That is um, awesome. just oh I love Tony Cruz. Jude, Be- Jude, Jude, Jude Bellingham onto the next pick. Who's ever next? Jude Bellingham. I got Jude. Jude, yeah. Jude knows. All right, James. Jude knows. This is where it's tough for me. I think man. I want to go Jamal Musiala. Ooh, Youngster. That was what I had high, yeah, really? high, a young hitter. I him, yeah. I had him high on this too, bro. Yep. Dude, wow. I think the Tony Cruz pick at two is crazy. I think so. Too. About at the <laughs> moment, like, no. uh, at, the moment, at the moment, he's not even in, he's not even there 11. He's not, yeah, he's not in my top 10 in the world. <laughs> I was gonna say they have four no, middle no, no, he's, he's literally, he's he's literally not in Madrid starting 11. Game. You had the choice of any midfielder in the world, and you chose <laughs> another two. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, James, you up, or you chose Musiala. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're taking. All good. right. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Martin Odegaard. No. <laughs> I... Declan Rice. Oh, no. Thomas Party. Caite la boca. I think. I think I'm gonna go Rodri. Oh, yep. Save yep. That's that, was, that was that was yeah. that was that was the pick. That, that was that, the pick. That's what I was gonna do on my. Well, un- unlike Nick, like everyone had that pick. Yeah, that was the pick. All right, that Hen, is- you get a you get a twofer on the snake I, here. So I you do get, get a twofer. You- yeah. Um. Okay. My twofer is going to look like Frankie De Jong, number one. Um, and then I am going to do partnering him. I am going to. I say to you trade. go the Barca boys. Huh? That, that would be sick. But I am going to go Enzo Fernandez as my second pick. Wow. Mm-hmm. Bucker. I was Dude, so excited. That's early. I thought it was going to slip to me. He, he wasn't in my top ten. He was not in my top ten. You're a liar. <laughs> not right. You're not a right. liar. I'll send you a screenshot of my me list. Too. I was getting him late. Uh, Dude, dang. I think the midfield two of those two would be disgusting. Dang. Okay. I'm I'm torn between like three here. Um but I think I am gonna go Pedri here. Mm. My only problem with Pedri, like I think this is a really big year for him. Obviously, he's still 20 years old. He's so young. He's gotten injured a lot in the last two seasons. He's missed a lot of football. Um so I think that this will be a pivotal year for him if he can stay healthy all season. But I don't hate that pick. He was he was on my list too, a short list. Yeah. All right, James, you picked Jamal Musiala your first round. We yeah, got I got. I got two guys that I want to pick. Well, you can only pick one. I know. Um. <clears throat> I'm gonna go Camavinga. Ah, I think he provides more. Bastard. I like that. He provides so much value, can play multiple positions, multifaceted player. Big fan. It's a great pick. So I have the the best young midfielder in the world. Um, and I'm gonna pair he needs he needs a veteran presence. He needs somebody that that has been there, maybe probably just won a tre- treble. Yeah. I'm gonna go goon to goon. I'm gonna go goon to goon. God, that's where I was going. I I'm gonna go with Silky Elki. I I generally think that He's gonna. St- he should start at Barcelona. Like we we know that he has sort of every different aspect to his game. Not only that, um, 
I, I really just think that his leadership qualities is going to, you know, this midfield three, him and Jude, um, he's going to sort of just give Jude the reins a little bit. In a few years, he's going to take it over and Ilke's, Ilke's going to retire. So, Can I give you a, a Mecca hot take right now? Sure. I think Gundawan's overrated. I think that's a hot take. That is I such think, a hot take. I think, yeah, take. I think yeah. Gundawan has popped yeah, up yeah. in a couple positions you know over the last three seasons where you see him as like he scored that goal two seasons ago to clinch like the the title win. He scored like a couple of big goals he, and like he's, the he's got the clutch, thing. he's got the clutch factor. Okay, has, those are you, remember, factors you, 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 you remember that set that little like three months where KDB got hurt and everybody said it said he wasn't gonna win the league. Yeah. And Ilkay Gundogan just stepped up and just said, I'm going to do the assist. I'm going to do the Kevin De Bruyne role. Like, this guy's got it all, man. Bro. Not to mention that he just kept – they've won three Premier League titles. He's been the captain. They just want to travel. What are we talking about here? I rest my case. I think he's a little overrated. And I think when he goes to Barcelona and we watch him over a whole season, you're going to see him not be able to carry that team into the same same winning ways. You you may be right. I I think they're – I think there are very few. Yeah, there, there. I think there are very few players in the world that can go from a team as stacked as Manchester City was last year and carry the same weight. But I think in a lot of cases, these guys that you know they're going to do better when they have better players around them for the majority, for the most part. So I don't foresee him doing as well as he did at City either. But I still think he's nails. I like that pick. But Nikki, which. Uh, which washed midfielder are you going to pick next? Oh, uh, it's funny. It might be you guys may think he's washed, but I freaking love this man. I'm going with Joshua Kimmich. I like Ooh, that. I really I thought you were going to go that. Paul Pogba. Just yeah, yeah dude. I, had, I just had really point. thought you were going to do it, and I was so excited. Yeah. I, I, I would have given anything list. for you to, for you to pick him out. That would have been so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought you, I thought there was a slim chance you might have picked like John Stones or something like that in your midfield. Who would be sick? All right. I wouldn't mind Mr. it. Mr. Hoover, you're at the turn, so you get you get your 2-3 pick now. Oh, shoot. I do have two, don't I? Uh, yeah. But you get the first opportunity. You, know, you your complete three. your three right here. Yeah. I know I could, and I think I'm going to. And shit. Who did I say first? KDB? KDB. Nice. Um, <laughs> nice. I'm Good gonna, start. <laughs> I'm going to go <laughs> give me a give me a Fetty Valverde. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. Yep. Um, he was on my list for sure. He's gonna lock that down. Um. Here's my issues. Uh, do I go for like a more out six with KDB and and Fede here? I think. Or I do think it I depends. Go I mean, Pedri don't give advice <laughs> and have a three man disgusting rotation through the middle. I'm going Pedri. I already picked Pedri. Pedri's off the board. Off the board. Pedri? Pedri's off the board. Good thing. Uh, True many <laughs> is the didn't want him anyways. True many is the backup six that I have in there. I literally already had it written down because I knew you were going to take him. Boom. I had literally. You said true many is your pick. I'm taking the other two of the four Real Madrid midfielders that are available because four of them. There. I mean, we're talking about four of the best. So yes, yeah. I'm confirming it right there. Done. Nice. And rounding out my midfield three, I am taking Bernardo Silva. That's a good pick. Yeah, it is. Oh, I good love pick. My three so much. I'm sorry. It's a good pick. Dope. Is it me? Is it me? Uh, it is you, sir. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. My my, do it. my third my third my third pick plays in the MLS. Um, I'm going Busquets. Whoa. I'm going, Whoa. I'm, I'm, I'm going Busquets. I was like, I'm are going you going to do this rogue shit that you're saying Messi's a cam? Like, I was uh, like, that's uh, bullshit. You, you, got, you guys are going to think I'm crazy. I still think that Busquets can walk in any team in the world. Like, like absolutely. His his entire, like, the way he plays has never been built, built off of, like, being faster than everybody, being quicker than everybody. Like, his whole entire game has been built off of, like, one and two touch turns and I still think that not only that, but he's going to look great on the graphic next to next to Jude Bellingham. And so I, I really think that <laughs> I really think that that midfield three right there is um, probably going to be the best that, best that we have here. And I don't think it's going to be close, but that's just me. Oh no! All right. 
so Dobe's good pick. I think that that might be a sleeper in this draft. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Jameson, your third pick, you selected, well, first two you selected, Musiala and Kamavinga. Who are you going to round out in your midfield? I think I'm going to do, man, there's so many good guys left. I know. I almost wish we could have gone five deep here. I think that would yeah. be fun. I think playing together, I'm going to pick Bruno G. Wow. Wow. I like it. Sure. Bruno G, Camavinga, Musiala. I'll take it. It's not bad. Yeah. Personally, I feel like there are several midfielders on the board that are better than Camavinga and Bruno G still. I do, I do too. I'm a little surprised that there's some of these people haven't gotten picked yet. I know. Yeah. Same. I know. And I, and knowing that there's so many good, good players left, I am so torn whether to round out. I mean, I guess I, I could really round out with any cam still on the board. What, what um, two do you have right now? Wink? I, I picked Rodri and Pedri. Okay. Gross. So I got to find, that's gross. I got to find somebody, yeah. somebody that ends in an I. <laughs> Can anybody help me find? Um, what, what are you missing? You're missing an attacking midfielder. Yeah, yeah, man. And so Bruno Fernandez, Odegaard are still available. Um, yeah, pick yeah. your poison, dog. I know. Wow. Me, Thomas Miller. Yeah. Gobby, when you put your nuts on the scale, it. does a needle move? <laughs> it does. It does. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with with my boy Martin Odegaard here. He just threw the draft. He just threw the draft. <laughs> <laughs> no way. He had a chance uh, of winning, and now it's gone. Nick, you lost as soon as you picked Tony Cruz. Tony Cruz will play in a graphic, 100%. You guys are crazy. Uh, for me to, to join Frankie de Jong, my ball-carrying midfielder, and Enzo Fernandez, my guy doing the dirty work and breaking lines, I am going to have Bruno Fernandez, which those three together are going to be a, a, a disaster to play against. They're going to run everywhere. They're going to press a ton, and uh, that is a hell of a three. I would love that. Beautiful. Well, I, th- I think to round it out, we should have everybody go through and, and say one more time who they pick. So who've... Who'd you KDB, end up with? KDB, Chumini, and Fede Valverde. Good squad. Nikki? I had Cruz, Kimmich, and Silva. Dobes? What a three. I have um, the best holy mid of the last decade, the best young player currently, and the captain of the treble winner. So I have Jude, Silky Ilky, and Busquets. Jameson. I had Musiala, Camavinga, and Bruno G. I think that's beautiful. I think Nick and Jake's are absurd. I think your mind's absolutely sick. absurd. I'll take it. I bro, think bro, Jake bro, is. I think you're crazy to think that mine's I'm, absurd. Bro, Bruno, G, Bruno G was on my list. Was Bruno he? Bruno G was on my list. On your yeah, top bro. 10 or just like in the short list? No, he was just in my list of players I might pick. Yeah, he after was we, on my After too, we said we're not going to do top five, I just, I just wrote down like 20. Yeah. yeah. That's what mine did. Too. Winks? Yeah, wild. Um, yeah, I I picked the by far best holding mid, the best six in the world, <laughs> Rodri, um, Pedri, and, and Martin Odegaard. I, like, I think that's really well balanced all the way around. And I, th- I think that, Hen, between your last pick and mine, I think it was a coin toss, so I... Had to go yeah. hometown. Yeah, hometown I totally get there. that. Um, I have Frankie de Jong, Enzo Fernandez, and Bruno Fernandez, um, which I really like. I really like my my three a lot. Um, I, I I know that we're going to take these to social media and to see uh, which uh, which three, which of the drafts that you all think is the best. So don't forget to comment and like uh, on those. Um, but to, to round out talking about a midfield three, we have a factor cap coming in from uh, from Butch, even though. He is no longer present on this podcast. His factor cap reads, does New- Newcastle's midfield three on paper rank up in the top three in the Premier League? Why or why not? And that three is Tonali, Joe Linton, and Bruno G. Are they in the top three midfields in the Premier League? Not yet. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go cap. I, I'm gonna go cap. I'm gonna go cap. I think, as well. I think Winks is right with with a not yet shout. Um, I I will say, almost every one of you fuckers, when I said that Tanali could be the transfer bro. of the season, <laughs> solely solely because Hoover said Pau Torres, and I was gonna agree with him there, but I wanted to be different. And then he scored the first goal in that game. I was immediately. I think Hen, I was with you, wasn't yeah, I? Yeah, we were in the car. Yeah. Yeah, we're on our we're in the car on a, on a way to a wedding, and I just looked at him and I was like, "Yeah, I was like, here fuck we go." Me. Saying that he was going to be the biggest bust scores like yeah. seven minutes into the game or whatever. Yeah, yeah man. but uh, no, I I think I think that in Newcastle's case, like they had a great showing their first game, but I think that Isak is unreal up top, and I don't know that they they definitely dominated the midfield, but I still think that you know they're they're. <laughs> Three or four other other clubs. Um, City, I think City and Arsenal for sure better. And and you can and you can make arguments for. I think I, think, I, I think Chelsea's, Chelsea's on paper. Now. Chelsea's yeah. on paper is better. Yeah, yes, everyone, for sure. everyone here except for maybe Pucci's midfield is probably better than Newcastle's on paper. I'd say definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there's. I think a lot of this quite the, the, his factor cap is recency bias because they were so good week one. But I do think that like they can become even scarier, which I think is is a good problem for Newcastle to have. It was kind of funny seeing. I don't know if you guys saw Newcastle's post of Tonali being like he doesn't want to be here. Yeah. After it's uh, after 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 it's him screaming in the corner. I'm gonna go cap for now, but I do think there's the potential. Newcastle looks like they're scary, man. Yeah, I, I picked them to. Fair, I had. Oh, sorry, who? I was just. Yeah, no, say, you're I good. Had new- I had Newcastle above Chelsea before the Consado siding, so like obviously yeah. I thought they would have pretty good of a year. I picked them to fall off purely out of hope, so uh, I just kind of wanted them <laughs> that to that happen. Yeah, I'm gonna go a cap as well. I, I I think I know that we're talking about a midfield three, and those are the three players that we're talking about. But I also think that they're an injury away from being irrelevant like any of those guys go down like the next man up is not at that caliber and Who, who's the next one willick yeah willick and longstaff um yeah. and Who? jacob murphy still there <laughs> he, yeah so Will- you know, willick had a sick uh, fifa card though i'm not gonna he lie. sure did yeah. 87 <laughs> rated, um, but like we could say the same thing about the majority of our teams i think chelsea has some some crazy death obviously as you alluded to earlier but um yeah, I, I just think it not yet, but it is a fun conversation to have. Um, but that wraps us up for tonight, fellas. Uh, you know, quick also alluding our week one of our, our Mecca Fantasy League uh, just finished. I finished with the highest points of the week with 92, Sweet, uh, which, which is sure. a lot. I was going to say, I, I, didn't, I didn't see that on the prep sheet, bro. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I just wanted to throw that. I, I looked at it like while we were talking. I was like, I kind of fucked uh, this weekend. I, so <laughs> I absolutely spanked Jake this week. I yeah, I mean, and and on so. and on. Yeah, he had Harry Kane, but on, on top of that, dude, I thought that I selected Kane and Saka as my, or sorry, Jesus, Holland and Saka as my captain and vice captain. And for whatever reason, it didn't save. And I had fucking Nico Jackson as my captain, and Jordan Pickford was my vice captain. Unreal. And I <laughs> st- still beat Jake by like twenty five points. So it's awesome. Uh, but, 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 but with that, two players, it, John Stones was in there too. So if you're, uh, probable, didn't play. I, I had him too, though. If you're listening and want to join in on the league, I think that there's like an you can join in for the next two or three weeks. Obviously, you'll start a week behind, but uh, join in if you want to. And as always, follow us on all the socials. Don't forget to vote on uh, those midfield three drafts. We'll be curious on your thoughts. Um, And with that being said, fellas, cheers. Good work. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Cheers, fellas.